and welcome to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. My name is Bella and I am a knitter and knitwear designer and sewist sometimes, spinner and crocheter sometimes as well. Uh, just all around crafty, fibery arts person. And I am based in Northern California in the US. And this is a podcast where I come and talk with you about what I've been making recently whether that's my process through knitwear design and things that I have going going on currently that I'm working on, or yeah, just new knitting projects that I'm working on, or sewing projects, lots of times I sew clothing, all things like that. So <laughs> if that sounds interesting to you, then stick around. Today's podcast is going to be a little wrap up of everything that I knit in 2023 last year. So this will just be knitting related things that I made um, and also things that are still in my household that have not been given away already as presents and I don't have access to share them with you today right now. So um, yeah, that's kind of going to be what today is about. And then later on in the episode today, towards the end, I thought I would share with you some plans that I have for this year, 2024, some plans that I have for some new knitwear designs and just things that are in the works currently, um, some new things. So I hope that you have had a great holiday season. It's already, I think, pretty much midway through January. So I'm a little bit late with this, but we, um, we have been on a lot of family trips, um, flying out to go visit family. And it just, it took a little, a little break to get back and like reset everything. It was a bit of a, a crazy busy holiday season for us and we also all got sick so that wasn't very fun it seems to be the thing that happens around the holiday season everyone gets sick um, but we're all fine now it wasn't COVID it was just normal flus and colds it's just kind of annoying <laughs> but yeah um, anyway I hope your holiday season was better than that and I hope you were able to get a lot of crafting done if that's what brings you joy um, yeah so with that, I guess we will get into everything that I knit in 2023 that I still have. So here is this huge pile. <laughs> I was looking at this pile. I, I opened up my Ravelry because um, that's the easiest way for me to remember <laughs> what I made in a certain amount of time because I, I like to be pretty consistent with um, logging things on Ravelry and making sure that I categorize everything so that I can remember for the future. So I was looking on Ravelry and looking at this pile here, it looks like I've knit a lot of sweaters. I think last year there were more shawls and accessories and things, but this year it was a lot of sweaters. And then I also made some more sweaters that were gifted. So with that, let's get into this pile of knitting in front of me. I will start with January. I think this was bound off in January. We'll start from the beginning of 2023. All right, so first thing that I finished in 2023 were the Triga mittens pattern right here. Hopefully you can see the details on those. So this is my Triga mittens pattern. It was inspired by what I am wearing today. I thought I would wear it so that we could kind of <laughs> be matchy matchy with all of the wheatgrass motifs. But these mittens I knit because I really wanted some mittens and I also really loved the motif on this, my Fields of Gold um, sweater design. And I thought it would be really sweet to add it onto a pair of mittens. So I absolutely adore these mittens. These are my most worn mittens now. Um, I pretty much wear them at this time of year in this season, January. I was wearing them all the time in December and even November. Anytime it's cold out now, anytime I'm going outside and it's cold, these are on my hands because they just do such a great job at <laughs> keeping you warm. Um, and my hands get very cold and I am very uncomfortable if my hands are cold. So it's really helped and I really love them a lot. I think part of the reason that they are so warm and toasty and comfortable is because I knit them with unspun yarn. And if you haven't heard me talk about unspun yarn, then Wow, that's crazy because I feel like I talk about it in every episode. <laughs> and yes, that is because I just love unspun yarn. I feel like it just gives you such warmth. It traps so much air since there's so much air left in, since it isn't spun. So I just think if you're going for warmth, 
then unspun yarn is a pretty good bet to make sure that your garment, whatever it may be, an accessory, a sweater, whatever it is, I think it has a better chance of being much warmer if it's got more air trapped in it. So, um, and I think also unspun yarn is like a good kind of in-between so that it's not as scratchy as maybe some other super warm yarns. Um, I've tried Let Lopi, which that's a spun yarn. I think it's like a single ply, um, just has a lot of twist to it. And that can be, at least for me, it, it's too scratchy. I can't wear that. <laughs> so if I'm looking for a really warm garment that'll keep me toasty warm and could even be like an outer wear garment with how warm it is, um, I would say that unspun yarn there's a bunch of brands out there. I will link some below if you're curious. Um, and you can also check out my patterns <laughs> if you're curious about knitting with unspun yarn, because it is my favorite. Um, and my favorite brand is Honor Oak Air, which produces New to Den, but absolutely, any, honestly, any unspun yarn is just amazing in my opinion. <laughs> so there we go, a little, a little love to unspun yarn. So yeah, these were knit with New to Den yarn, um, just a really lovely kind of a purplish, pinkish, gray color, just really sweet and subtle. So yeah, these were super fun and pretty quick to knit, knit with some just little sweet little details and they get used a lot. And I'm really happy with how they've been holding up as well. They haven't really pilled much at all and they honestly kind of look the same as when I knit them. I don't like notice any like visible signs of wear to be honest and I was I'm kind of happy about that because with the little wheatgrass motifs in the front here um, it's not spun or anything so it could you know have gotten caught on things possibly or I don't know but no it's held up perfectly well and same with this sweater too I've worn it a ton and again like really no signs of wear so that's pretty great <laughs> Um, so let's see, next, I, I don't think I'm going to go exactly in order of when I found these off because I honestly don't remember and I don't have Ravelry in front of me right now, but I will try to do my best. Um, I think I found this off in January or possibly February, but this is another unspun yarn garment and I totally adore this sweater. I knit this sweater, um, as part of the Inspired by Ellen cow that was happening at the time and everyone was knitting things with this little kind of motif here at the bottom that I used. So I think it kind of looks like peacock feathers. I think it's really sweet and um, actually Caroline from Owner Og Air of New to Den Yarns, she had made a sweater um, almost exactly like this. I changed some things. I added a little thing here at the top, um, kind of in the yoke area, is different than how she knit her sweater, I believe. But um, yeah, anyway, this was a completely, like, oops, sorry flowers, this was a completely um, improvised design. So I wrote down what I did, I think, but since this isn't my motif, I can never publish it at all, which I know a lot of you, <laughs> a lot of people here were, and on my Instagram were, Quite sad about that so I'm sorry but it was definitely a lot of fun to make and went relatively quickly because I did use uh, pretty heavy heavy needles and heavyweight yarn so um, let's see I used two strands of Newton and held together for each color so two of the gray and two of the blue which in these in these colorways, it pretty much made an air and weight yarn. So it's all over color work of an air and weight yarn. So it's very squishy and bulky and cozy and it's just like a pillow. <laughs> um, it's really, really comfy. So yeah, this is very bulky weight, um, very, very warm. I wear this a lot in the colder months. I can't stand it if it's really warm at all because it's so warm and has a lot of like fuzz to it and I mean it is rustic you know I don't know how to explain it but it gets to a point where like if you're too warm then 
the wool feels more itchy. I wonder if you feel the same way. Um, but that's how I feel. <laughs> if warm, if, if it's too warm out or if I'm too warm in my garment, then it just becomes uncomfortable. But other than that, it's perfect. So this is really, really great for when it's really cold out and I can just go for a walk and it's no problem. It's kind of like a windbreaker. It's like I don't feel any cold anywhere that this is touching my skin, but everywhere else I'm cold. <laughs> That's pretty much how it works. So I honestly, I really love this combo of full color work with double strands of like two colors. So. I really love this combo for the warmth. I'm actually thinking I may want to knit some sort of a bottoms, some sort of pants or sweats or something like that. Something comfortable but really, really warm. And again, this has held up really well, just like the other unspun yarn things. But yeah, I do only wear it in the, in the colder months. I think there are some parts that are yeah, there are some parts, like on the sleeves a little bit, they're starting to pill, but that would be super easy to just trim off or get your little pill shaver and just go over those parts. And yeah, I'm just really happy with this one. And it gets a lot of wear and I think it's just absolutely beautiful with that little motif at the bottom and then that I repeated on the neckline at the top. And I also added some short rows, if you can't tell, the back is a little bit higher, so. There we go, that's that one. Um, and yeah, this one doesn't really have a name because it was just improvised, inspired by the Inspired by Ellen Cow. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember where the original motif is from. Oh, maybe it's Ficolana. I will have it linked down below. Um, I will link all the project pages to these projects so you can see there. Um, okay, next I think was this one. So this is my Wayworth cowl, another design that I made last year. I think this came out in March of last year and it's just a really cozy comfy cowl. I was I was feeling like when I used to go biking in the springtime it's too wet right now to do that, but when I was biking, when I was riding my bike in the springtime, it would get so cold on my neck and I just, I didn't want to wear a scarf or a bigger shawl because I would just worry about that flying off and going somewhere else. So I really wanted something um, that would just be light and airy, but still very cozy and would just like keep the wind off of my neck when I'm biking. So this did a great job at that. Um, so I really love how this one came out. Um, yeah, because it's also unspun yarn. You can see a trend. I fell in love, full head over heels, in love with unspun yarn this year. So I knit a lot of things. Um, I keep saying this year. I mean 2023. It takes me a while to get used to. Oh, that was last year. <laughs> so this is the Wayworth cowl. It is all over mosaic knitting. And I also added some little wrap stitch detailing. So all these little motifs throughout are all done with wrapping stitches around the mosaic knitting. And it was just two colors, single stranded unspun, which that was a little bit of a new challenge for me. I don't know if I had done a full project with single strand unspun yarn before I had ma made this but I really love the feel of it. It gives it much more of a drape and just a better handle, I think, um, as opposed to holding it double, so it becomes like an Aran weight yarn. But held single, it is definitely a fingering weight yarn or even sometimes a lace weight yarn, depending on the color or the brand that you get. But yeah, I just really love this one. And this one doesn't get as much wear unless I am bike riding, <laughs> because for me, that is the best like use case. That's when it's most useful for me, is when I'm doing something that's like, a lot of wind is coming towards me and my neck gets really, really cold. So that's that one. Um, and oh, I don't know what was next. <laughs> Let me dig through my pile here. I guess we will just go for this one and this was another new design of mine from last year 2023 
This is called the Lace Cap Tee. And again, unspun yarn. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a little too obsessed, aren't I? But I promise you, this year I am branching out into new yarns and I will be talking about new things. So <laughs> it's not always unspun forever and ever. And I remember this one was inspired by hydrangeas and then also wanting something with stripes, but wanting to make the stripes kind of more subtle than just straight bands of color. So if I hold it up closer, maybe you can see the details. There's some textures in the stripes and there's two different colors going on. So it's not as kind of striking in a way. And then there's also some lace throughout the entire thing. So this one was a really quick knit. It's really nice for if you need your core to be warm, but you don't necessarily need your arms to be warm. Um, it's actually really, it's kind of like a, a use case of like a, a vest. I wear this like instead of wearing a vest, if that makes sense. That's when I would wear this tee. Um, it is also two strands of unspun held together. So with these colorways, it was actually more of like a DK weight yarn. So it kind of depends, but these were kind of lighter colorways, but I really enjoyed making this one. And this one did take a while. I remember um, this past summer in 2023, I kind of lost my knitting mojo. It was really hot here and I was getting more into spinning um, and other fiber arts and kind of, I think this project and a few others kind of went on the back burner for a little while. But by the time I finished it, it was, it was good weather to wear it again. It was getting a little cooler out. Um, and especially in the summer evenings and this got a, a lot of wear so yeah I really like it it's a little bit cropped on me um, the length that I knit this one it's a little bit cropped but yeah so this is the lace cap tee and then I think I finished this one next so this one was a very much a work in progress <laughs> for a little while. This is my Primaveral cardigan, which is now in test knitting, and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you all. This pattern is going to be published in February, so keep an eye out for that one. If you would like to have more, more and more often updates from me regarding this and any other future designs, then you can follow me on Instagram and or you can sign up for my newsletter which I always have linked below in the description below my videos. So you can see there if you're curious. But this one, um, oh gosh, I, this, I feel like this was a whip for most of the year. I remember I got the yarn in February or so and then cast on pretty much right when I received the yarn and then I was just whipping away. It's all over cable knit, so that was, a lot of fun just a really sweet delicate little texture throughout and then I finished the cardigan and then I had this idea to do a scalloped neckline but I couldn't figure out how to make it look good I tried so many different techniques because I really I wanted to try to make it with just knitting I have seen that done before but usually the scallop edge is quite a bit thicker than what I was looking to do um, so I was really trying a lot of different kind of techniques that I could think of to do the scalloping edge, but it didn't, it never looked as professional or clean um, as I wanted it to. So that kind of made this project just, just wait, just wait for a while. And I was just kind of thinking in the back of my mind, like, what do I want to do with it? I knew that I really wanted the scallop neckline as an option in the pattern. There's also in the pattern an option for a double knit neckline if you would like just kind of a more standard classic look. But yeah, so it was kind of on the back burner for a little while. I was just trying to figure out what to do with it. And then I finally decided on a crochet neckline. So it is now done, the scallop edge is now done completely, completely <laughs> with crochet. Um, but even if you've never done crochet before, I think you can definitely learn. Um, it's 
just one stitch, it's just a double crochet is all you need to know. Well, I guess also a single crochet, but you can't do a double crochet without a single crochet. But either way, it's relatively simple. Um, and then I also am, I have filmed a <laughs> uh, tutorial for this scalloping edge. So that will also be included in the pattern if you choose to do that. So yeah, it's like I said, this pattern's in test knitting right now and I'm just, oh, the test knitters are just sending pictures and, and they're just all coming out so beautifully. So I'm really excited about this pattern and excited to share it with you all. Oh, and yes, if you couldn't see, it's got little kind of bowed sleeves. So they're straight all the way down with quite a bit of positive ease and then they just come to a tighter cuff there at the bottom. So, yeah. And then this one is also done, um, the sample here is also done with two strands of unspun yarn, so it's a worsted weight pattern. So it's very nice and cozy and elegant, and you could definitely dress it up or dress it down, leave it open or closed, however you would like. So, very excited about that pattern coming soon. And then, oh, I forgot about this one. Okay, so this sweater I knit for my partner. This is, oh my gosh, what is this called again? Bears. Unbearable. This is the Unbearable sweater by Les Garçons Knits. And I just adore this sweater. Isn't that the cutest little thing? So it's just a kind of classic colorwork yoke sweater. And I, again, knit this for my partner. He was requesting this sweater. I had asked him, um, or I think I've been asking him for years, ever since I got back into knitting, um, you know, what, what do you want me to knit you? I, I was like, you know, kind of, let's forget about the, the boyfriend sweater curse. Um, and I actually did something on this one to try to mitigate that. If, if you call it witchcraft, maybe, I don't know. But I had heard somewhere that if you knit your hair into the sweater, then it negates the boyfriend sweater curse. So who knows? <laughs> but he really loves the sweater. It's a little bit itchy for him um, in this part because the, the yarn that we chose for the sleeves and the body, kind of like the main color, is a little bit itchy. Um, once it was knit up, but he kind of just uses it as like an over, over sweater. Um, mm, it smells like him. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, he kind of just uses it as like a outerwear kind of a garment. So it's nice and cozy warm, but doesn't want it, he doesn't want it touching his skin, which I think is fine. He still wears it, so that makes me happy. Um, and then another thing, oh yeah, so we did change the, the, chart on this one a little bit. Um, the original design has little flowers here all the way around the bottom of the bears, but my partner wanted it to feel more foresty, um, kind of California inspired, kind of more natural, or not that flowers aren't natural. What am I trying to say? It's just more kind of a foresty vibe, so he wanted kind of leaf slash tree looking little motifs at the bottom. So I just whipped up a little chart for that piece. So just from here down on the chart is different from what the original was. And I'm really happy with how that came out. And then I also added some hand spun to this as well. So two of the colors are hand spun. The hood in green. This was one of my hand spun yarns that I did from some Onok Air fiber. So the people that make Newton and Yarn Unspun Yarn, they also make spinning fiber. And that's what this green is. And I totally adore this color. Oh my golly. Anyway. <laughs> and then the other hand spun yarn is the cream that you see throughout there. So two hand spuns. And this was just such a labor of love. This just, it took a while, but I was just so happy to knit it for him. And it's just, ugh, I'm so happy it's in our lives now. It's just really beautiful and it suits him really well. If I can find a picture or I will find a picture 
of him wearing this and insert it here so you can see. But yeah, love this one very much. And definitely recommend the pattern on this one. Just so cute. Oh, and another thing we noticed quite recently was the bears are wearing hats. Can you see that? They're wearing little green hats. And that's so cute. So there we go. Love this sweater. And now let's get to the morose sweater. So this is another new design of mine that I started working on in 2023. This is actually the first sample and I am still working through the second sample. I'm knitting it also in, you guessed it, unspun yarn. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> this particular one, this, uh, the original that the pattern was first kind of inspired by, the pattern was, me writing the pattern was inspired by the colors of this first sample. So I had had these yarns in my stash and was planning to design some sort of a pattern with them for, I think, over a year. And then it finally happened. So this was the original and so it's an all over so it's a yoke sweater kind of a typical yoke style color work construction there is some short row shaping at the front and the back neckline so the back is raised a little bit to cover the back of your neck and then yeah there's some color work yoke and then it's a pretty typical fit as well so it's just a few inches of positive ease so that it's it's really comfortable to wear it's not tight anywhere but i recommend having a little bit of ease and it's just really comfy and then there's also some of the color work at the sleeve cuffs as well just to tie that all together so i really love how this one came out this one i used uh, Miss Babs yarn and also spin cycle yarns. So the main color is Miss Babs yarn antique brass. It's her yummy two ply base. So it's a two ply fingering weight base. And then I used for the color work, I used two different colors of spin cycle yarns. They're dyed in the wool, which is, they call it a sport weight, but honestly, I think it's more of a fingering more often. It seems to, to feel like a fingering. Or maybe a light sport but anyway um, I really I really love this garment it definitely feels different than all of my unspun and more rusticy woolly things since this is a uh, spins or spin cycle it is a superwash yarn it is completely superwash yarn which I don't really work with that often anymore I purchased this at a time that I was working with superwash a lot more often and it's just got a totally different feeling. I think it's actually nice that it's not as warm, at least in my opinion, this is not as warm. So it kind of makes it wearable more often, especially being in California. <laughs> um, it can make it some, sometimes more wearable, but to be honest, I am almost always cold, whether it's inside and there's AC or it's outside and it's cold anyway, <laughs> so. Yeah, anyway, rustic yarn is definitely more my favorite. Anything non-superwash is definitely more of my favorite, but I really do love these colors and how this one came out. So that is the Moreau sweater, and this pattern is going to be released on January 26th. So if you are curious, then keep an eye out for that. You can follow my newsletter or Instagram to get more updates on that. So that's that one. Oh, and all these patterns that I've talked about, um, mine at least, they all come in nine different sizes. I try to be as size inclusive as possible with my patterns. I find that really important. So just if you were curious, yes, they all come in nine different sizes. Okay, and let's get to some accessories because I've been forgetting about those. Um, okay. So we will talk about some more mittens. So my partner, I knit these for my partner. He needed some mittens. He was complaining of cold hands and we can't have that. We cannot have that. 
if you are a knitter and someone in your family is complaining of being cold, then you gotta fix it. <laughs> At least that's how I feel. Um, so he needed some mittens and so I had him pick out a color that he really liked. He loves green, if you couldn't tell already. And um, he chose this color. And this is again, uh, New to Den Yarn, Unspun Yarn. And I knit them, I knit these up for him. He wanted, uh, he wanted one to, they're kind of a basic knit, mitten, uh, as far as the construction goes, but he wanted a little bit of a design on them. So on this one, he had me do a little sword. Wonder if you can see that. This one has a little sword on it. And then this one is supposed to be a shield with a heart on it. <laughs> it I promise it looked better when I first did it, but these have gotten quite a bit of wear and they're kind of pilly now. So it's supposed to be a shield with a heart on it. <laughs> so I think it was cute. Sword and shield mittens. So yeah, he's gotten a lot of wear out of these. Um, anytime it's cold out, when he's going to work in the morning, he always wears these out and you can see that they've gotten a ton of wear. I don't know why these ones have pilled so much more and they they look so much more worn than the other unspun things. Um, perhaps it's the colorway since they are, at least for Nutiden, they are all different blends for the different colors. So yeah, that was just an interesting thing. But he really gets a lot of wear, of the, wear out of these and they're really warm for him. So I'm really happy about that. And another project that I finished was some socks. These are the Kura socks. I talk about this pattern, this pattern recipe. Um, sorry, there's some hair on it. I talk about this uh, recipe for the Kura socks here a lot. I really love them. They're my favorite sock construction. They fit my feet and my partner's feet and anyone that I've knit them for. They just fit really well and they're also easy to knit in my opinion. They're probably the easiest socks, sock construction for me. Um, you knit bottom up. I won't tell you the whole thing but basically you knit toe up. There's no Kitchener stitch. There's no picking up stitches there's not like a gusset in the traditional sense where you know you're picking up stitches around kind of a little square that you knit but it gives such a good fit so if you're trying to get into learning socks not learning to knit socks this year if you haven't knit socks before i would definitely recommend checking out this um, kuda sock recipe from evil knits and i will link that down below so yeah, really love that one. And it's a free, it's a free pattern. It's on her blog. It's she, she so kindly has it available for free. Um, so yeah, that's what I used as the base construction for these socks. And for these ones, I just decided to kind of marl and fade some yarns together. Um, so you can see I used quite a few different colors. I just started here at the top with a little gold color and then I went to kind of a grayish white and then what pinks different types of pinks and so on and so forth so I just thought they would be really sweet so these also get a ton of wear I love them so much they're really cozy they're really easy to just chuck on and wear around the house I always have to have something on my feet in the house I don't like feeling the floor if it's cold or anything. We have some wood floors and I just don't like feeling the cold on my feet. So I'm always wearing some sort of socks and now they're all hand knit because I knit so many socks. Um, but yeah, these ones I really love. And I don't know if I said they're unspun. I use new Den yarn as well for these. And I used two strands held together for all the colors. So as I was fading the colors, um, each color was always two strands of either one color of two strands or one strand of one color, one strand of another color, holding those together and then knitting. So it was kind of a marl and that's how I did the fading. I was just switching between colors as I went. And another interesting thing that I have noticed um, working with unspun yarn 
is that it really fills out the space that you give it. So these socks, two strands, right? This sweater, two strands. How different does that gauge look? Like, you couldn't get that normally, right? With, with a spun yarn, you'd, you'd have some holes somewhere if you tried to use the same, the same weight of yarn and with two different needle, needle sizes. It just fills the space that you give it. So this again is two strands of the unspun yarn, creating like an Aran weight yarn, worsted Aran weight somewhere in there. And then this is also two strands of unspun yarn and it's just so much more compacted in this case and just really like tough and will last a very long time. <laughs> yeah, just really sturdy in this case when you use smaller needles, but then if you give it the room and the space to fill out and trap up a bunch of air in there, then you can do big, big stitches with the same amount of yarn. So I just think that's really cool that it just gives you so much play, um, so much variance to what you can knit with the same yarn. Um, so yeah, these ones, the Kuda socks with unspun yarn, it really holds up so well. I have gotten so much use out of these socks, like wearing them months and months and months, obviously washing them and, you know, keeping them clean, but I've worn them so, so many times and they only just, they, they keep getting stronger, I feel. Like there's no signs of holes happening. It doesn't look like it's thinning anywhere. It got stained a little bit <laughs> from my shoes, but like there's just, it just keeps getting stronger and it's like kind of felting together. So it just looks like it's getting better with wear, which is kind of interesting and unique and unlike a lot of other yarns. So yeah, I just, I really love unspun yarn for socks specifically. I think it gets better before it gets worse. So I will stop rambling on about those. <laughs> and here is another project that I finished. Um, this is a little beret, sort of tam sort of hat thing that I finished last year. And honestly, I haven't worn this really at all. I knit it way too small. I, I don't know. I was kind of just wanting to knit something and I didn't, I didn't calculate the size properly beforehand. And I kind of just, I was like, I want to do some brioche. So let's do some brioche. <laughs> and it's just, it's just smaller than what I wanted it to be. Um, not as like big and voluminous and it doesn't really cover my ears. It kind of just sits on my head. So I wouldn't call it a fail, but like, I think it's beautiful. Like I love the colors. Um, I don't remember exactly what yarn I used, but I know it was two strands of a Surrey alpaca silk blend yarn. It was two strands of like the same, um, what am I trying to say? The same skein and then one strand of a DK weight yarn. So it did make a really bulky combo with all of that, but it's really comfy and squidgy. And I think if I had just knit this bigger, it would have been perfect. Like I totally love the design and everything. Um, so I'm probably gonna be coming back to this design. It, yeah, I just love the fabric that came out of it and the little pom-pom on top. I just think it's so cute but I need to <laughs> redo the math on the amount of stitches just to make it a little bit bigger. And there's also a uh, twisted ribbing for the bottom edge there. So yeah, unfortunately this one doesn't really get a lot of wear, really any at all, <laughs> but it's cute and it just sits on my little mannequin being cute. So I hope this will get used one day. I'm thinking it will probably be a gift for a child um, in the future. We shall see. But yeah, and then I made this little pom-pom at the top with the same yarn that I used to knit it. So that's that one. I don't have a name for this pattern at this point. Um, I do have it all written down and everything, but I just need to kind of tweak it and do it again. So that's that one. And 
this. Now we'll do these. So these are another pair of socks that I finished. Um, these are pretty new to me. I haven't gotten tons of wear out of it just because they haven't been finished for too, too long. <laughs> but um, these were some socks that were part of a collaboration that I did with a uh, yarn dyer, a natural yarn dyer. So Jewel of Wool and Twine Yarns. Um, last year in the fall time, she put together a wonderful, adorable little sock package, sock box. And it came with her, some of her hand dyed yarns. So these three colors, um, this beautiful kind of rusty orange, and then a cream and a really cool like mauve brown. It's kind of a purplish brown for the tops of the mushrooms. So she hand dyed all those with natural practices, natural hand dyeing techniques. And then she also collaborated with a designer, Anna, and they designed uh, these cute little socks. They're called the, uh, a shortcut to mushrooms socks. And then she also collaborated with some other makers. So I had my hand felted mushroom stitch markers in that box as well. And then there was another maker that had a gorgeous little um, acorn little box made out of wood, just like hand turned wood. It was just so beautiful. And then I wanted to order one of the sock boxes because I just thought it was such an adorable combination of things. So these are the A Shortcut to Mushroom socks, just cute little, cute little color work at the top. These went really quickly. Um, it was a great pattern. I really enjoyed the pattern and learned some new techniques as well. Um, they're really comfortable and I really do love the yarn. I will probably be purchasing from her in the future and knitting something else. I still do have a lot of this yarn left, to be honest. I think I probably have at least half of the 100 grams gain, if not more. So I'll have to do something with that in the future. But yeah, it's a really nice rustic yarn. Not very, not really scratchy in my opinion at all. And especially being on the feet, that doesn't bother me at all. And yeah, just had a lot of fun knitting them. They were pretty quick and simple. And alrighty, the last sweater that I finished in 2023 was this sweater. This is another new design and it is called the Huge Hug. So this sweater was inspired by just wanting something that I could curl up with that would just be so comfortable and warm and just the definition of like cozy and comfy. <laughs> so it's really oversized and is just kind of flowy and drapey. And this uses, this sample here uses um, two strands held together. Oh, I have a stitch marker in it. It, ha it has two strands held together. So it's one strand of unspun yarn held with one strand of a silk mohair. So that made a really lovely fabric. I have fallen in love with this fabric combo or this yarn combo. You can just see how drapey and how much movement it has. It's just wonderful. And also the, the stitch pattern for this does, I'm sure does aid in the movement and drapiness. So it actually came out quite elegant in my opinion. And if I can uh, get some photos of me wearing it, I will put it in here, but um, yeah, I just really love how this came out. And I also incorporated a little split hem here at the bottom because I did want it um, to be able to be tucked into pants if you're gonna be wearing it out. I do like that look as well or having that option. Um, and I also, when, when sweaters are kind of oversized and longer, I like when there's a split hem because I don't like when the bottom of a sweater is kind of like tighter around my hips. I just don't really like that look personally on me. So since this one was gonna be longer and more oversized, I added a little split hem there at the bottom and the back is longer, a bit longer than the front. So it can be modest. And yeah, it's just so cozy and warm. It's actually a really interesting fabric. Um, it's very airy and open. Um, I would say there is lace in it. <laughs> it's kind of a lacy fabric, but since it is so 
fluffy since the yarn is so fluffy it really fills it out a lot so it doesn't feel like you're not wearing a sweater if that makes sense since the unspun yarn itself is very fluffy and then also the silk mohair is very fluffy it just fills in all the holes kind of so you can't really tell that it's holy if that makes sense um, but then it gives a really interesting wearing experience it's very light and it's not as warm as something like like this that is you know completely solidly <laughs> very thick fabric but it just it just makes you warm enough it's it just brings you to a comfortable temperature where you're not cold anymore at least that's what I found so it's just it's just really comfortable to wear in every way it makes you temperature regulated and it's just cozy because it's oversized and just oh, it's got dropped shoulders so yeah I'm just very happy with how this one came out and this one is very very soon to be ready for test knitting so if you would like to be signing up if you would like to apply to be a test knitter for this pattern then make sure to either either and or uh, sign up for my newsletter or follow me on Instagram then you will see when the application is available so who get hug that's what that one is so excited and then last but not least the last bind off of 2023 was also another new pattern that is actually already out and published <laughs> this is the through the forest hat and it is just a really cute quick little color work knit with kind of Christmas tree like foresty trees all around so I knit this hat because I was just in December I was just feeling I was just feeling the Christmas vibe and mood and I was just really inspired by the evergreens that we have all around where I live and I just really wanted to, to make a little hat out of it. So this is, yeah, this is called the Through the Forest hat. And it was really quick. Um, there was a lot of swatching that I did, you know, as one does when designing a knitwear pattern. Um, but the final one here, this final um, version, this only took me less than a day to knit. So really quick pattern. I was envisioning it could be a good Kind of last minute gift idea if you needed that and some people did that but yeah so it just went really quickly and so the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn so I used two different colors of a DK weight yarn this uh, yarn is from Ba Ram Yu and it was a new yarn to me they had actually sent me some of their yarns to try and I just fell in love with them I really love this yarn for a rustic and more rustic uh, you know more minimally processed kind of a, a wool it was really nice I believe it's a British wool and it's got a nice amount of variegation to it they are solid dyes but there's something more lively about the colors in person when you're looking at it up close um, I always like some sort of life to my colors I don't I don't want like flat solid so I just really loved the yarns and it just felt really nice and I am also kind of sensitive in my forehead region so I also needed something needed a yarn for this project that would not be itching my forehead <laughs> and this also did that very well so this particular yarn is not itchy for me on my forehead so that's why I chose to make a, a hat out of that so yeah just a DK weight yarn really quick it comes in three different sizes so yeah and then I also made a little pom-pom with the green for the top just thought that was cute so this has been getting a lot of wear in this season as well just really cozy and comfy to keep my head warm and I was wearing this when we were visiting in family in Virginia and it was really cold over there so this has been getting a good amount of use um, so that's everything that I finished in 2023. Wow, I have this whole pile in front of me now. Um, yeah, that was everything for 2023. So 
Now let's talk about some of the things that I have in the progress, in the works, in progress for this new year, some new designs. So first we have a new shawl design that I'm working on currently and it is going to be intarsia. Have you ever done intarsia? I would love to know. Please let me know in a comment down below if you've ever knit intarsia before. Um, it's, I think, a really fun technique and it sounds like it would be complicated. Intarsia, what is that word? But it's really not. It's literally just twisting yarns around each other when you do color changes. So this will be a really fun project, I think. I'm really excited. Here's a little bit of a sneak peek. <laughs> um, you can't really see much there. And this is going to be going through some tweaks. It's not quite ready yet. The fabric is not exactly where I want it yet, but you can see all the different colors <laughs> that are happening. So this is gonna be a colorful design. I'm thinking this will be something for using up scraps in your stash. Um, I definitely want this to be something that inspires you to play with color and use what you have. Yeah, just, I'm really excited about this one. There will be more, more details to come, but I don't want to spoil too much of it at this point. But yeah, it tars you. And then I am working on a crochet pattern. Oh wait, I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing to share with you from things I finished last year somehow it fell. <laughs> so I'll just talk about these real quick. These are some mittens that I finished last year in 2023. These are the underwing mittens and I, oh my gosh, these had been in the works for years. I think I finished one of the mittens or one of the mitts and then I ran out of yarn and then I just didn't. <laughs> I just forgot about them for like a while. But I finally finished them this year and I haven't been getting a ton of use out of them yet. Um, I think because it's been getting cold and I want my fingers to be warm, you know? Um, but yeah, I've worn them a couple times when it was not as cold and they're just so pretty. I just love the little motif on the front. So it's all over color work on both of them. Just a really gorgeous pattern. And for this one, I used um, Jameson Smith wool, Jameson Smith yarns. So it's a fingering weight yarn, kind of a light fingering, um, British wool. And no, 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 Jameson's of Shetland. Jameson Smith. Oh, I always get confused between the two. They're, in person, the yarns look exactly the same. So I always get confused which one I used. But it was either Jameson and Smith or Jameson's of Shetland. I know Jameson's of Shetland has like a zillion color choices. So I love them for that. Um, but anyway, it's a rustic wool, um, definitely a dyed in the wool and then blended and spun after, which I really love that look of. It's again, I was talking about lively colors. It just has so much life to it. And in person, you can just see like the lavender just has pinks and purples and blues. And there's just, more to it. Will it focus? There's just more to it. So I really, I really love that. And then the black also has like little white flecks throughout. So yeah, these were really cute and fun design. And I'm finally, <laughs> finally have them to be able to be worn. So once it starts turning into spring and it warms up a little bit, then I think I'll be able to wear these again. Okay. So on to my crochet design. <laughs> I am working on, yes, a crochet pattern. It's granny square based, so it's pretty simple, like pattern repeat, if that makes sense. Um, but this is really mostly a selfish idea. Um, and I just thought it would be really fun to use up some colors that I have. And I just really want a handmade blanket, a hand handmade a blanket for our home. So it's going to be hard for me to share with you here what I'm envisioning, but these are kind of where the squares are at now. Um, there's multiple, multiple
multiple colors happening throughout. So this is going to focus. So there's multiple colors happening throughout. Each corner is a different color. And then in the middle, you can see there's kind of a, a stripe this way happening. So essentially my idea is that every square will be able to be matched up with the ones around it. And it's going to make like a bigger image, if that makes sense. Um, I will put a picture here because I can't hold these up in a way that it will make sense. And I also don't have them sewn together yet. So it's really, I just have a big pile of granny squares at this point. Um, and I haven't blocked them or anything like that. And I still haven't even woven in the ends because I don't know, it's just, it's a work in progress. Um, but kind of, I will put a picture here so you can kind of see the idea, but each uh, granny square is going to be a small piece of a larger picture. And then as the blanket comes together, it will make new shapes with the way that the granny squares are oriented and sewn together. If that makes sense. Um, so that's kind of the idea. I really wanted something, I really wanted a project that I could make a ton of granny squares because I really love that process and they're just so much fun and really easy and just like kind of meditative and just like it's like popcorn or what what is that phrase uh easy uh Netflix knitting or you know that kind of a thing <laughs> TV knitting I think that's the phrase anyway this is crochet but still you get the idea that it's it's an easy and you don't really have to think about it kind of a pattern and I can just make a ton of them and then sew them all up at the end. And I've kind of also created a little new ritual with this. So every single day I am trying to make two of those those granny squares. So I have <laughs> I have a uh, kind of planned it out and I think I will be done with the blanket in April if I keep going with two granny squares every day. <laughs> so we shall see if that actually works out. I'm hoping so, because it's it's kind of nice springy colors. Um, I think it'll be good fitting for having it be done in April, but yeah, we shall see. Um, I'm really, ugh, I'm just so excited. I think it's gonna be, if it, if it comes out the way that I'm envisioning it in my head and the way that I've planned it, it's just gonna be really cool. And it'll be a good way for using up bits of colors that you may have and kind of a, an exercise in creativity if you want to partake in this pattern <laughs> when I make it available. If you're interested in crochet or if you are a crocheter yourself already, um, yeah, 2023 was definitely the year that I adventured into crochet. I have a friend who's a crocheter and she really inspired me. And then I had learned crochet a while ago, like years and years and years ago, but it never really clicked for me. And I just, I don't know, I couldn't really figure it out. But when my friend retaught me, <laughs> I think it was pretty, pretty late into last year, um, I definitely got back into it. And yeah, I'm not going to become a crocheter now, but I do want to make this blanket at least. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, speaking of crochet, we were talking about things that I finished last year. Here's a crochet pillow made, uh, pillow I made. <laughs> So that's, that's living in our living room here now. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling on. So <laughs> that's some of the things that I made last year and some new ideas for this year. And I'm still working on a lot of whips um, that I still have going. And we'll talk about that next time. So I hope you enjoyed. Ho um, hope you maybe found something that you would want in it or just ideas for creativity or anything like that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and we'll talk next time. Bye bye.